know about how this process began here in Northampton? Would that be helpful? That would be very helpful. Long story short, um, President Obama raised the cap on the usual numbers of refugees that are resettled in the United States last late fall, November. Raised the cap. It has been 70,000 for quite some time. Because of the fact that there are uh, so many displaced people and so many refugees now, um, the, U the US said, we'll raise the cap. So fiscal year 2016 from 70 to 85,000, fiscal year 2017, 100,000. Although I heard yesterday that actually we've raised that to 110,000 for the fiscal year. Um, fiscal year, of course, federal fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2017, which is next month. Um, so um, that happened. Um, the, the Migrant and Refugee Services, which is our national agency, this, this is complex and there's sort of all these pieces and I, I, I want to be clear. So we got a call from our, our meaning the Catholic Church's uh, Migrant and Refugee Services um, national office. And they said, would you consider resettling some refugees? And Catholic Charities nationally is the largest reseller of refugees in the country um, and has been one of the longest running agencies. But our agency in Springfield, which is a social service agency that works with the most vulnerable uh, uh, communities, um, had not resettled refugees. So Migrant Refugee Services called us and said, would you consider resettling refugees? And we said no. And we said no because we have seen couple of reasons. Um, you know, the federal process um, means well, and it is hugely inadequate for um, successful integration. And by that, I don't mean we're asking people to give up their cultures, but sort of successful functioning in a different, in a different culture. Um, and um, we see, uh, because Catholic Charities works with refugees and social services, and in, we work with a lot of em empowerment with refugee women, um, uh, there, um, we, we have seen firsthand um, how refugees and communities that have them in them are impacted by this federal process that, again, means well, <clears throat> but doesn't give nearly enough money to any agency in which to make successful integration happen. The federal uh, government says, we will pay you the R&P, Reception and Placement Agency, for basically 90 days worth of services for refugees. There's a contract, again, this is a much longer process. I won't, I won't bore you with the details, but you, you know, when uh, there's the, the State Department oversees uh, refugee resettlement in the United States, um, and then there are these national offices that go to affiliates um, that are called RP sites, reception and placement sites. Um, and they are what they sound like. Reception and placement means you, you, you receive refugees and you provide very basic services with not a lot of money for 90 days. Sometimes there's state money for eight months or a year, um, but that's Next those question. are different grants. Yes. So how many refugees are coming to Northampton? So. Because um, I want to get to the reception and placement part, but basically people are going to arrive here they're going to have 90 days to become integrated into No. Okay. All right. That's where we're that's where we're offering a different approach. Okay. We said we weren't going to resettle refugees that way. By those rules, Catholic Charities says no, we're not doing we're not going going to. So what did Catholic Charities say? Um so at the same time this happened, the city council here in Northampton passed a resolution welcoming Syrian refugees. The Human Rights Commission was a co-sponsor of that resolution. Okay. Good to know. I didn't know that. 
Um, and uh, so when Migrant and Refugee Services kept calling us and saying, look, you know, we need communities that are going to be willing to do this, we thought, well, you know, we see what happens in Northampton, I mean, in the greater Springfield area. It's, a, it's saturated. There are thousands of refugees that are resettled there. Um, and some do well, and some sort of get by, and some don't do so well. Um, and we were not going to contribute to that. So we thought the only way we would consider helping out this crisis is if there was a different model, a different approach of how this happened. So when Northampton, a community that I'm very familiar with, I do a lot of art classes here, um, my church is here, I, it's a community that I know well, um, I, uh, we approached Elisa and Bill Dwight and said, thank you for, for making this resolution, thank you for making this resolution. Now, we have, an, we have a unique opportunity, a window of opportunity. Um, are you willing to partner with us in an innovative and creative approach to uh, calling Northampton home for a very small number of refugees. We wanted to start small. This is, a, this is an initiative. This is a, this is a creative, innovative project. I, I, project sounds so distant. I don't mean that they're, they're people's lives in this. And, and in a, it's an initiative. It's an initial initiative. Um, and we want to see how it works. And we're going to unfold it slowly so the minimum number that we can receive to become an RMP site and receive federal funding is 51. Don't ask me why 51. I don't know. Hey, why not ask me why 51? <laughs> Do not know. Um, and that's 51 individuals. Not families. Not families. So what that really translates to is 10 to 15 families, depending on the family Do you know, size. do you have the names of the families who? No, so the State Department, the way the federal process works is that we are not given much information. What we could request when we put in an abstract, when we finally, when we finally got the sense from not only the city council, but the mayor, and then we had a, a large meeting of many community leaders here um, in June, testing the pulse. We sort of threw this out and said, Here's an opportunity. What do you think? Does Northampton have the capacity? Does it have the commitment, the investment, the interest? And resoundingly at that meeting, they said, yeah, we, yeah there are going to be some challenges, but this is consistent with how we see ourselves as a community. Yes, we absolutely should be welcoming refugees and, and being a community that um, is helping make home. So I, I have a question. If anybody has questions, yeah, just jump in. Anybody have before my well, question? I do. I, I just wanted to clarify. You not only don't know the families, but you don't know where they're coming from. We do. We do. Oh, um, we do? That was the one, that's sort of one of the pieces that we have control oh. over. Um, and um, what we heard, so we requested families as opposed to individuals. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, because most of the folks who are waiting in the pipeline, I mean, a lot of them are families. <laughs> um, and we're thinking about the children, and we're thinking about the parents, and uh, so, so, um, and then we, because Northampton had said we welcome Syrian refugees, um, we thought, okay, they're making a gesture towards Syrian refugees, um, which no, not all communities are. <laughs> So we have requested to the State Department uh, Syrians, folks from Syria, folks from Iraq, because they're still coming over mostly on special visa. Um, and we know that there's a huge number of folks from Burundi and Congo who have been in the pipeline. Uh, that part of the world just keeps getting messier. There's just sort of this constant need and flow of people from Burundi and Congo. So those are the four countries that we have requested to the State Department for. Can I uh, ask a question? Yes. I know that one of the issues facing um, Springfield is that they have accepted a lot of uh, refugees from different countries. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways in which that taxes schools and services is that people speaking multiple languages. So it's not possible to limit it to one country with one language. I'm, I'm asking that because it 
it would appear to me that probably people are speaking several languages. So we've identified, we did want to keep that small. It's a good question. So that would mean Arabic speakers, and it would mean either Kirundi speakers or Swahili speakers. Okay, a combination of people who speak those three languages so would be limited to those three languages. That is, our, that, is, that is what we have requested, and that's the conversations that we are having with the school department because uh, it what is the getting, school department said? Because so. it, it, it requires having translators in the schools for the kids with, who are speaking. Well, not only that, that, but Springfield had a, a had a, not Springfield, these organizations that bring refugees. Mm -hmm. a, I know for the Somali refugees, so many of them felt abandoned. And it was just, you know, for, for a, a while, there was only one translator, a man, for everybody. Girls, boys, women, and children. You know, women having to go get a pap smear. Here's this. You know, it was awful. It was it was horrific. The Is federal it, government does not pay agencies enough money. I mean, like any. I, and I am not. I'm not. I'm not um, uh, defending not an that. Apologist I'm not an apologist <laughs> for that. Um, that is the gap in the federal resettlement. Process. So how is Catholic Charities but going to One move? quick thing just to interject that I think is relevant to what you're both kind of asking is that it's my understanding that Catholic Charities delineated those three or three languages essentially because in fact there are large communities of <coughs> Indians and Congolese in Springfield and so um, the agencies in the area do have some knowledge capacity around those languages. And Catholic Charities itself does. I mean, we run a Burundian women's group on Mondays, and we have, you know, we have several interpreters and translators who speak in, and write Kirundi. So that was the actual yes. impetus for requesting people from those particular countries. Well, but you, we, we, I'm sorry. Do you worry about the fact that if they're here, they're kind of isolated from their community in Springfield? <clears throat> That's a choice they'll have to make. Um, I think personally, to resettle more and more and more people in an area that does not have enough affordable housing. I mean, I, obviously, housing is going to be an issue here, and we're working on that. We have a, a, a but it, there's just. Um, You know, Northampton is, I mean, Springfield, West Springfield, the Islamic Society is, you know, 25 minutes down the road. I met for a long time with the Hampshire Mosque today, a person from the Hampshire Mosque. These people are stepping forward. I've got already the Burundian community from Springfield saying, we, we are going to support, you know, we're, we're coming in on this, mm -hmm. you know, because with this cap of pe this increase in people, they have to go somewhere, yeah. and you can't keep putting people in places where it, there aren't enough ser there aren't right. services and there isn't affordable housing and there isn't so what we're asking Northampton to do is what other communities are being asked to do. I mean, if we're going to be a country that receives refugees, let's be creative yeah. and problem solve and problem solve about this. Yeah. So what I would like, go ahead. John. I was going to say, this is a, look, a new to me because any, everything I read, I thought it was just Syria. No. So, I mean, from the, in the paper, that's the thing. No. Yeah, there have been, you're, not, you're right. No, you're, you're right. There have been some misinterpretations of that. Um, yeah, yes, I don't know where, folks, where but I was under the impression it was just Syria, which yeah. I, I didn't realize these other ones. She's right. Oh, okay. It's been on Mass Live. It's been well, I mean, everybody sort of seems to get yeah. that. We're that. the state. You know, yeah. Yeah. But um, Brian had questions. Now, I guess I'm, I'm I'm jumping the gun here. Do do we know? we re what we've requested. When will we know what we? Yeah, I guess. It's just, we know. will know. So here's how the State Department works, <clears throat> and this is why we're working so hard to get everything on board now. That's different. Also, that's one of our approaches is that we're getting everything set up before they come so that there can be as seamless a transition and, and, and work people into that integration process, not scrambling when they get here. But to answer your question, um, uh, the way the State Department works is once October 1 
comes, now we have said to the State Department, look, we're trying something new. Do not, please, please do not call us on October 1st with the first family. Like, we really, really, really want to do this right and do this well. Can you, can we ask that you put off our first family? Because they're not all going to come at once. They might come one or two families a month. So it's going to be over the course of the year. But, but Brian, go first. Um, so one of the difficulties that is often identified in immigrant groups in general, refugees being a special category of that, is um, the ability to integrate linguistically. Have you identified any organizations here specifically in the upper part of the valley that it's work main with that. One of our main concerns besides housing. So not only did we, Catholic Charities, just recently hire a master's level ESL mm -hmm. teacher who's also a workforce development person. Mm -hmm. We have been working very closely with CNA and ILI. Um, Could and you please spell it out? I don't oh, know Center yeah. for New Americans uh -huh. and Institute for International Language Institute. Mm -hmm. um, so they have been, they were brought into the conversation very early on. We want a partner. We can't, we can't do this well, I, without I everybody ask, who's, who's, who has something to offer. What is a, what's innovative about a, what, what is going to happen this time with refugees? Number one, we're trying to set things in motion ahead of time. Set what things in motion? Um, Having all the things lined up. What all the things lined up? Um, English language learning classes that people can immediately go into on day one. Okay. Right now, there's a there's a waiting list, sometimes two years long, in the Springfield area for basic level ESL. So it's the Center for New Americans. That's often a problem for them that they don't have enough volunteers. They work almost exclusively on a volunteer basis. Um, has there been any conversations happening thus far in terms of uh, a volunteer recruitment drive for Huge. that organization? It oh. might be useful to just talk about the framework that's been set up, okay. the steering committee. And yeah, so, so you know how this, partnership lo how this partnership's looking like. So after the community meeting in June. Can I just uh, for one thing? Yeah. Is, can I just, in answer to your question, I'm going to try to answer her question quickly. But I think the innovative thing is that they are working with the community. So it's a really grassroots movement. So and they're we're not do, saying we're going to do all the work. The community is going to work with us. And okay. we are doing, we Thank are you. building long term infrastructure. We are not leaving them at 90 days. Our funding with the government may run out, but we want refugees to thrive. And that takes a long time. And it takes a, I hate the hate that village. So one of the things but that we are true. doing, one of the it. things that we are doing, and one of the biggest innovations is we are, as we speak, creating circles of care, which are small groups of people um, who will be walking with. They'll be matched up with a family, and from even before the family arrives, this this circle of care is going to be attentive. They're going to be. They're going to show how to ride the bus, they're going to invite them to Thanksgiving dinner, they're going to take them. I took, I just have to side, sidebar, but I hope this is relevant. Yesterday, one of our Burundian women had come to me on Monday and said she, she had one dress and she's about to have a baby and uh, she um, needed some things. Um, for, you know, she needed a, a, a new dress and she needed some baby stuff. Um, and um, so I, we had some gift cards that have been donated to us from J.C. Penney. I took this woman to the mall yesterday. I wish I had documented this experience for this I mean, she, she couldn't, number one, she, it, it, it was a world that she had not been open to. And it made her really understand that uh, there's so much for her to learn. Like, it, you could just see her just say, wow, like, there, there are endless possibilities for me. Like, I, I did not even know this thing existed. And um, the mall? The mall. the mall, yeah, but you know, and not that it represented consumerism, just sort of this, this gather, I mean, whatever the mall 
Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, maybe the mall wasn't the best, but, but to watch her expression of grasping that, in fact, her opportunity here in America was going to open all kinds of doors for her. Well, I want to, you know, yeah, here in the United States of America, it's, it's very different than other parts of the world. I understand that. How do you, if they, how is Catholic Charities vetting these circles of care? We have, are these so, so to get to what she's, to get to what you're, so after that community meeting, we called together from the com from the community meeting in June the, of these community key community stakeholders. We said we're forming a steering group, and we need it to be representative of the key stakeholders: housing, the school committee, faith-based groups, uh, city council. I, I I can I have the sort of the whole list. Is the of hospital involved here? Is not yet. The didn't, they can not yet. But they're, they're coming. They're yeah. coming. Yeah. No, 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 no doubt. Because they they're also working very hard on cultural competence, yep. which is something very new for them. We teach that, yeah. actually. Capital good. Cherries is one of the things good. I do, good. Um, good. Good. Is, is go to schools and go to organizations and do that. So out of this steer, so there's a steering group that's been meeting for months now, for, well, three times. And, but is it, been, and so what's the makeup of that steering committee? She just I, told I can pass the No, I, all I heard was the schools. I, I mean, I didn't hear the police department. The, the, because they, we, we invited. I didn't hear people who are multi, you know, cultural competence. So, no, I want to I need you to, I need you to trust. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that we have thought this through. I'm sure. Very carefully. I'm sure I am. And that we have engaged the 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 city of Northampton, the, the the community leaders, in helping us know who needs to who needs to be who who needs to be a part of this. You know, this initial it's tiers. So we need a we need an advisory group. We need a we need a group who's going to help you know build this partnership. Is there anybody from Community Action in that steering committee? Uh, Community no. Action, though, is based in Greenfield. Nope. They, they work here in Northampton, Claire also in Northampton. Claire was at the and she chose not to, yep. just because of her overcommitment, not yep. to be part of it, but she's one of the advisors. We were asking process. people uh, on the steering group to offer time and energy. We knew this was going to be an intensive investment Catholic of time. Catholic Charities teaches, a, as you said, a cultural competence. Is there cultural competence on the steering committee? Um. They have, yes. I mean, there's an yes. There is. There is. Um, but the but the steering group has said that this is a learning curve for them as well. And one of the reasons I think, you know, if if you hadn't, um, Lori, turned to Susanna, I wanted to come to the group and say, you know, let's figure out how the Human Rights Commission can play a role because we're still. I mean, yes, the steering committee has met three times for three months, but and the working we're, groups are we're moving just forward. now, I mean, we are moving forward, but it's, it's a slowish process. We don't have a lot of time because the first families will come probably in January. January. Right. But, okay, that but was what I was. Being yeah. in touch with the Human Rights Commission is one of the many pieces that are being put in place to try and have this kind of patchwork um, quilt kind of um, foundation for the project. So. Just an answer to your concern, Natalia, I think that, you know, that's that's why we want to be here with the Human Rights Commission talking about this to get some ideas. Yeah, and I want to be to, I want to be supportive of this. That. And I think that the you know Catholic Charity I know Catholic Charities work in Springfield in the with the immigrant community. I have respect for Catholic Charities. If they I hope you're not interpreting uh, my questions as anything but I want to. I really want to support this effort on a, on a personal level. It's just that, as you have seen, I have seen such disaster, debacles happen with refugees. But these agencies, they bring them over, and yeah, they don't have the money. They're not. Then to me, my answer is, then you're in the wrong business. If you can't force the government to do it right, you're in the wrong business. And I like what Catholic Charity said. It's like, no, we're not going to do this for 90 days. We're going to do it longer. We're going to find partners so we can do that. We do have a steering committee. We have, we have working the Reverend groups. Andrea Vazian, so like to me, you're like, uh, right. working well, groups. I, mean, I yeah. think it's, a, I see it a little differently. I mean, I, sure, it'd be great if there was money for longer than 90 days, but I think 
that it's very important for the community to step up and that so I the community think doesn't yeah okay we can talk about that later but well I'm I mean integration doesn't happen because the, the community isn't is like there's not um, prepared or, or well, we haven't been educated the, the community isn't aware of this need yeah we're a little bit isolated and one of the things I've, I've been to that Catholic charity says in Springfield is actually very moving uh, videos about some of the refugee camps that are in uh, countries. Um, there's a priest who goes and does that uh, educational piece. And I mean, I think one of the things the Human Rights Committee could do would be to bring in, uh, in terms of education, we can we can have some of these films that Catholic Charity says, uh, the trainings that they do, you know, public awareness. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean also there's a problem already with like the Spanish-speaking population here, and I know this because I work as a volunteer with Casa Latina. So I am all for people from everywhere coming to Montana. Though it's very hard because as we know, this is a very expensive city. And even though they're really good, you know, well-intentioned people in the school system, mm -hmm. it's still a school system where, as far as I know, in terms of the Spanish-speaking population, I don't know what it's like for other populations, there are, there are challenges. So I see that the superintendent is on the steering committee, but that doesn't, to me, off the top, of, you know, that doesn't impress me. What impresses me is that Reverend Andrea Basian is there because she, like you, will make sure that people are held accountable. And let me just speak uh, in John Provost's behalf. Mm -hmm. He has been, so, he has been an amazing, uh, uh, amazing presence in this. And um, he, he has, um, not just him, everybody on the steering committee, the, the heart that they're bringing to this, the care, the thought, um, the sense of we can do this, we know it's going to be challenging. What, the, what I get from the steering committee and from what I'm hearing when we do these house parties is we're not wearing rose-colored glasses about this. But what we said to this council, city council at the start, and what we're going to say again and again and again to the community is, you say you're a welcoming community. Here is an opportunity in an incredibly significant life or death way to become not just a place where people are housed, but a home for people. And, and so, um, it, it's, uh, it, it, uh, it's on Northampton to make this real. Northampton said, yeah, welcome. So now it's on Northampton to create those opportunities and go move beyond the, what a great idea, Catholic Charities. And, Ca yeah. and Catholic Charities has said, we're not leaving you, Northampton. Like after 90 days, we're not just saying, so good luck, Northampton. Mm -hmm. We have an, we're opening an office, a small office. We get, you know, our case manager is going to be here. We have, you know, I'm the coordinator of outreach. I mean, I'm liaising with everybody. We, when we said partner, we mean partner. And so we are going to provide whatever resource. I mean, we're 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 working with the community on this to make it a success for all for, for all of us, for the community as well as for the refugees. I, I think everything you're saying is really really good I, I'm really really impressed with it where are we what do we have set up for three months down the road if somebody family comes it's moving so these working groups have been meeting of um, housing employment uh, public education and communications uh, schools and circles of, care. circles of care the volunteer piece do um, they have housing um, we're working on it. The housing committee, the housing working group is working diligently on it. We have had these, thanks to Elisa, who has um, set up 15 house parties. <laughs> We've been, I've got to go to one actually tonight, um, where we are just, we're getting small groups of people together to say, here's the need. Do you, do you or do you have somebody who you know who has a multifamily house or a mother-in-law apartment that you are willing to rent at below market rate in the spirit of mm -hmm. this creative initiative. Have you got any commitments? Um, we're, get, we're, get, we're getting, we're, you know, people are just, I mean, as Elisa said, 
it's taken a long time. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I and you know, I, I I think we're all feeling pushed by the January one. I mean, I think that we're all. I, I, personally, I mean, I'm wishing we had another <laughs> year to unfold this, but. I'm thinking right now about the family that's sitting in a refugee camp right now. But as of right this second, we don't have so any a little, confirmed housing. A little more. I'm not on the housing working group. I don't know that. Oh, okay. But they're they're more, working diligently. Kind of infrastructural kind of background is that we are having a, about 16 house parties, and that includes a church party with the Episcopal diocese, one with uh, Beit Ahava, and one with the um, uh, Nay Israel with the local synagogue. So 16, I think it's 16 total, three of those are churches that are going to create their own circles of support. Um, at each of those house parties we've had a minimum of 20 people, some have been as large as 40 people. Um, and what we do is we spend two hours kind of talking about the project, talking about the initiative, to use that word, it's a better word. Um, and then also laying out for people what are the volunteer opportunities, what are the ways you can be involved. So we have sign-up sheets of you know, 20 to 40 people at each of these house parties with people saying, I'll do this particular kind of volunteering. I want to constitute a circle of support with six of my friends, with six households in my neighborhood. Um, I have an idea about a landlord that I know might be able to offer below market rents. We have at least one landlord that has said that they have, I think, two units that they can offer. So um, we've done eight of those 16 house parties already. We're going to another one tonight. I mean, we've basically, for the last month and a half, we've had at least two house parties a week. And it's yep, three this week. It's, it's very intensive, but it's, it's a really, we just wanted to kind of start quietly in, in a small, excuse me, <clears throat> in a small way to, um, to kind of get the word bubbling up so that this would kind of grow virally, and I think that it's it's working. And then on top of those 16 house parties, we're having these two huge uh, community meetings, and we purposefully did one in the evening and one during the day to try and kind of reach different parts of the Northampton community. Um, so for me here. We're, we, we have, have a person who is creating, who has created page. a website and a Facebook page. It's just, it's just launching now. The community, <clears throat> excuse me, the community meetings are both. Um, they're on Facebook. We're, we're in the last stages of getting a website off the ground. So, you know, all this is happening simultaneously. So it's, it's, you know, it's a lot that's going on. But there really is a very deliberate. There has been a very deliberate building of infrastructure on all these different levels. So if I went to the Catholic Charities website, would there be a link to the Refugee Project Initiative in there, Northampton? There will be eventually. There will be. It's not up yet, though. Catholic Charities is part of the Diocese of Springfield, so getting the, di anyway, the diocese, getting them to, it's a long story. Are you just telling me they're all old? No, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's just, it's, it's, bureaucracy. it's bureaucracy. You know, it's, 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 so we are, we have a website that is about to launch, and I think that we'll have to probably do a well, you know, a public. Here it is. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have one of the working groups is a communications media and communications yeah. work group, and if anybody has that expertise and you'd like to be part of it, it's cool. you know we're looking for people for the. I have a question, Susanna. Is a when we talk about the the workforce development? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, after me, you. If the, Obviously, you won't know, Catholic charities won't know what the skill sets are of people until they're here, and then there's, I suppose, some sort of intake process where they're asked. So one of the innovations that we are, so usually, so the federal government says our criteria for successful refugee resettlement is self-sufficiency. That's such a great... Well, that's the American way. It is the American way. Yeah. And, and so, so that, um, and by that, they mean we are going to move these refugees into employment right away. Our definition of success is whether they're employed or not. Well, we know that it's more complicated than that. You've got to learn some language, you've got some cultural orientation, you need to learn vocabulary, you have to. So one of the innovations that we are offering is this is, why, and this is why we hired our ESOL person. We're cre we've created a, a curriculum 
So uh, the refugees, <coughs> the adults that will come. Um, means? Uh, English is a second language. Okay. Um, we're going to ask, we're going to, um, we're going to um, have uh, our newly arrived folks go through an intensive English language learning process before we're asking them to get work. And it's going to be vocabulary uh, uh, that is workforce based um, so that uh, so they'll have at least a basic grasp of the English language. And we and then and then of course we're going to build on it. That's where Center for New Americans and ILI is coming in, you know, but we uh, what, what we're doing is saying you got to of course you have to learn the language first or at least have some basic knowledge. Well, there's also of the, the issue before just before Brian you asked the question, there's also the issue of not everyone can learn a second language. Mm -hmm. It's it's like singing, oh, sure. it's like mathematics. You have all you want to, but you can't. So I hope there's a recognition in that innovation that, well, this person just really isn't grasping English, not because they don't want to, it's just because it's it's we're gonna give it a whirl. Well, we work we I'm work sure with these Polynesian women with this group, and many of them, um, you know, uh, come from a, a, an experience and a background where um, you know they they have not had education. Um, and, uh, and well, how many of us are bilingual here in this in this group? Yeah. How many of us are in the group that can't learn a second yeah, language? Yeah, right, exactly. And as much as you would want. And so the same thing with refugees. I mean, I would hate to see a situation where refugees just can't learn English and then all their opportunities go down without, I mean, I, I don't know what that would, maybe there's like, there's the international language of, of you know. Institute. Sorry? The institute. No, 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 no. I mean, the, there are other ways of communicating beyond language. You know, maybe somebody has some great computer skills. I don't know. But just to be open to all the the possibilities. Brian, you had a question? Um, so it was sort of uh, tangentially addressed, but um, one of my experiences being a relatively young person here in Northampton has been that many people of my generation and peer group don't understand how to become civically engaged in these kind of these kind of programs. Um, so the question I was going to ask is um, whether there were web-based, youth-centric initiatives happening, um, and I think you kind of answered that when you were referring to the communications work, uh, working group that, um, you know, f Facebook initiatives and things like that are, are things that across the country we're seeing massively engage people in the 20-something and early 30-something age group. Um, I mean, our, our political movements on the internet are almost exclusively engaging that age group, whereas political movements that happen outside of that realm tend to engage in older populations. So that was, my question was sort of answered by the Would the you be willing group. with that fabulous thing that you just said, would you be willing mm -hmm. to um, join us? Absolutely, absolutely. We do have a Twitter account and an Instagram account that we're just about to activate when we launch all the rest yeah. of this. So we've it's thought about it, but to have that expertise would be good. Lori has a question. Candace has some expertise. Yes, too. absolutely. We do have a young person who came forward who is a professional. She is doing uh, a lot of our social media. Social media marketing is a full field. I think in, you and she arena. will <laughs> get along great, yeah. I hate to sound like Matt Lauer, but we don't have much time. Okay. <laughs> what else hey, can Lori. I help you? What else can I, I, I answer have, for you? I just have question. three questions, oh, which I'm just going to ask all three of them. Um, number one, do you need any more house parties? Um, number two, are these house parties in all corners of the city, like every neighborhood? They have been, we didn't, we, we initially thought that we would do them, make sure that every ward would have one, but we also just kind of, whoever came forward, we kind of said yes, and people are reaching out to their own communities. So more than geographically, I think we're reaching different kinds of populations in the city. That said, I think we probably could do a few more. I mean, it's a huge time investment because um, two or three of us are at every single oh. one of them and presenting nonstop, and it's, it's just a lot, and we're bringing in a recently resettled refugee to each one oh. to share her or his story, so um, I was just wondering I if we maybe, have room for a few more. Well, I was wondering if maybe the Human Rights Commission mm -hmm. could together sponsor one or host one, one, one or something. Mm -hmm. But then the other question is, have you had any pushback? Um, 
we're beginning, I mean, pushback is a, it's an interesting, I mean, I know John Provost, for instance, says that, you know, he, he's, he gets stuff on the school page. We, we know that there is resistance. We know, we know this. Um, and, um, uh, but have we had, you know, you know, I get some phone calls. Um, people mostly curious or with specific questions as opposed to sort of calling and saying these people don't, you know, I, and I'm sure that, that there are people, there, that there are those feelings out there. We anticipate that, uh, and encourage, I mean, that's why we're having these public meetings. We want to hear concerns. <coughs> we want to hear everybody's voice about this. But you haven't heard that in public so far? I mean, because I haven't seen any letters to the editor against it. And Carla, you have a question after the one? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we haven't. It's out there, and we keep sort of expect. I mean, we've lived through, we have lived through the worst kind in Springfield. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, 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 have, we have lived through the worst kind of um, experience. We're, we're seasoned veterans mm -hmm. in what it looks like when a community and a and a mayor doesn't want refugees in it. Does everybody understand? I only know it anecdotally. Yes, the mayor, the mayor spoke as a very bluntly. I'm giving him the, the benefit of the doubt that he, he his, his quote is terrible. He doesn't want to be He continues to done. feel that way, but it's because the agencies do not. Have their. This is the way I understand. Okay, we're not. I'm not going to debate. Talking about the mayor of Springfield, not yeah. the mayor of North Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, we went right to the mayor after we spoke with Elisa and Bill because that was important. We had experienced what it looked like mm -hmm. when a mayor was um, was uh, okay, but not so Carla. So we went right to the mayor, and his response was, "Why wouldn't we explore doing this?" But Carla, you have a question? In, in response to your question, at the house parties, the kind of concern and, and questions we get are very similar to the ones that you're expressing. Let's have Carla ask her question. I, I'm I know, but I really want to move this question. along. I, to I totally get it, but I want Carla, who hasn't said anything, to be able to ask her question. I mean, what what's concerning to me, thinking that it's going to be families, would be the children and how they're going to be received by other children. I have a nine-year-old in fourth grade in Jackson Street, mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised at the things kids say to her. Not before surprised. Weekend. Not surprised. So, is there any sort of educational, like actually going into the schools and explaining we're going to receive this new children? That's what the schools working group is working on. They're sort of creating a strategy about how to to do that. Um, I'm, yeah. How, and how I'm worried about your worry, which is cultural competence, because. The idea is that it's poor refugees who are coming in, and I want to understand what's the pride of being Syrian, what's the pride of being Burundian, what's the pride of being from the Congo, what's so great and fabulous about that, and that's the kind of work yes. That, yes. that we need to how do. How so we message this, kids. how we message this is, is, is critical, because you know the perception is, oh, those poor refugees, oh, those poor people. And what we keep saying is, it's not our, I, I mean, they, they may have, you know, they may have certain vulnerabilities, but what the refugee communities that we work with, oh my God, they're amazing people. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's true, well, but I mean, they've been- Lori, Lori, excuse me, because I, Alisa, I interrupted Alisa, so I want her now to continue saying what she was saying. Okay. I, I think I could make just that people are asking. People have realistic concerns, and I've heard from people in the community that have concerns that we just that we need to have the kind of wherewithal the infrastructure to be able to support them. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, make clear that we understand that there are enormous challenges yeah. here, but that you know we are. I, I've been so impressed consistently with Catholic Charities and the thinking behind how they're working to create this kind of. Um, Structure and and undergirding for this project, and so by doing the best that we can. Um, can I've, we, I've worked, oh, can you before you ask your question? I just want to make sure that we all ask questions, mm -hmm. and then one of the comments also is what I would like to know, and I, I admire the work that Catholic Charities is doing and that you're doing, so that refugees can come to Northampton. Is there any kind of report? Because what Carla and I have said, 
as Latinas, we have we have we know stories already in this fine city where people and, and your daughter goes to like a great middle school with yeah. an awesome principal. Mm -hmm. So este, I think I, I would like to see, all right, what what is then John Provost put it on paper, what is the commitment to cultural competence? What is the commitment to housing? A, what is the city really committed to doing? What are the partners really committed to doing? Because they're not doing it right now with a Puerto Ricans. And so I just don't see evidence that they would do it with people from other parts of the world, um, even though they're refugees. I think there are people who are trying, for, for sure. And I think that some people do manage to be helpful. I think I'm coming from a place of fear knowing Springfield the way you know Springfield, and then knowing what Northampton is as a Puerto Rican, that there's a lot of good intention, but we need the follow through. And I can only say that so far what I've seen leads us to believe and have confidence in the people of Northampton and following through. Um, you know, that that's- Is there anything in writing that says, okay, so what is, what is the superintendent of schools going to make sure that the principals do and the teachers do so that children are not called names based on you know who they are, where they come from, what language they speak. The schools working group is 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 um, painfully aware of this. But what are they doing? I, you know, I'm part of the schools working group. We're, we are we are unfolding this. Okay. This is an organic mm -hmm. unfolding process, okay. and we're asking the people of Northampton to, um, despite jitters, despite questions, let's try this. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll work with that. You know, we're not gonna just sort of leave the city of Northampton and the refugees stranded. But we're saying, we don't have all the answers to this. That's why we're trying to be innovative and creative. We know that the current system does not serve refugees well. Mm -hmm. so. We have faith in the community of Northampton, and based on what we've seen, I mean, I'm getting emails and phone calls, and our volunteer, I mean, the lists are just, you know, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. Um, and, and I understand that there are good intentions and that follow through is, I, from what I'm seeing, I have every confidence. Alisa, do you want to speak to that? Um. I think that you have very well articulated concerns and you have reason for concern. I think that this city pats itself on the back a lot for being, um, you know, really politically correct and understanding how to deal with race and language difference and all that and doesn't, isn't able to follow through. And I think we'll see that to some extent with the refugees. I also think these are folks who need a place to live and we are stepping up and we're, you know, working the hardest that we possibly can and doing a really good job of putting together some infrastructure to support them, but I think it's absolutely not to say that it's gonna be done perfectly. Oh. And I think that, and that just segues for me into where I hope to go, because I know that Susanna and I have to leave in about 10 minutes to get to this house party, but um, I'm really curious, you know, what the Human Rights Commission sees um, as its possible role in doing this better. So if we could kind of move on to that, because we only have 10 minutes, and you guys, of course, could talk after we have to leave, but mm -hmm. I, I think that's really an important piece. Does anybody say. have an answer to I have a well, question? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. The thing is, I, have, I used to be a caseworker. I used to be a counselor. I've worked in shelters. I've done all kinds of 50 million different things in social services. And one of the things I'm very concerned about, I would like to see the refugees. I have known refugees in my life. I have had a long history of dealing with people of different different backgrounds for different reasons and everything else like that. But I'm, I want to make sure that the people that come here are going to be treated well, that they're not going to be the, the, the targets of hate crimes, and I want to make sure that they are at least have like avenues of people to call in case they have problems of that sort, people having problems like somebody's being mean to them in the neighborhood. And I, know, and I know all too well, because of my experiences working in the various fields that I worked in, that people fall through the cracks. And I want to make sure that the people who fall through the cracks 
end up with a support system so that maybe that they can get some kind of alternative system in place so in case their situation doesn't work out. Okay. That's what the circles of care are about. Can I just also add, sorry, one thing, but we had a community of refugees here in the 80s, Vietnamese and Cambodian families were settled in Northampton. And it seems to me there should be some, some, you know, some literature, some studies, some whatever, about how did this actually work? How did it, how did we process these People, how did it work out for these families? Were and they refugees who yes, settled they were through a resettlement agency? Yeah, yes. They came here as a group all together, Vietnamese and people. Cambodians. Yeah. Yes, and okay. so it seems to me the city this should be looking at how we did in that situation, which, you know, my kids were going through the public school at that point. It was very trying, you know, for the most part they were settled at Hampshire Heights and in the housing project and so forth. Whatever, I'm just saying, we're not new, we have tried this before, and I think there might be lessons to be learned by looking at that. So I don't mean to take up your time. No, thank you, How that's a really good point I mean, too. is there somebody that you would suggest that, I mean, I know that Andrea Vazion at our meeting today spoke about, you know, uh, the Quaker, the Quaker, uh, her Quaker meeting at the time, sponsoring three Guatemalan, Guatemalan families. families. This was after the Guatemalan. Okay. But so the school system, the city, the housing, whatever, there should be record. I mean, there should be in the city some documentation. I mean, Lori, so, maybe you Yeah, that's not come up. I mean, that has not come yeah, up in this conversation. The steering committee, they have people with long institutional memory the way that we have it. <laughs> oh, and it so may be different, <laughs> too, if you said the Quakers resettled or sponsored them. It may be different than a federally funded process. Uh, you know, I think that the because the Vietnamese and the Cambodians were sort of the first, one of the first waves of the whole, as the refugee uh, policy was being formed, um, I, you know, it's, it's, a, it's sort of a science now. I mean, the, you know, the, the State Department, the federal government, it's sort of this very it's a bad science. mandated it's, it's a terrible science process. It's a 90 day, you know, go ahead, Joel. I'm sorry. I, in, in kind of answering your question, I'm hearing a lot of, we're working on it, we're, it's evolving, it's doing, what I'm not, what, I, what I'm trying to get my head around is answer your question, what can we do, how can we help? Is there some sort of a synopsis or an outline or something that says, here's the timeline, here's what we need done by when, here's what we have done, here's what we need to do. Something where I can, I mean, just from a standpoint, I can say, okay, here's an area where the Human Rights Commission can help you. Right now, it's... it's. I, I can think of ways we can help. Okay, I that's great, because right now I'm, I'm like overloaded. Okay, no worries. I mean, I think you guys, I'm just aware that you have to leave, so I just want to say what comes to the top of my head is we could write a letter to the editor for the Human Rights Commission talking about how we support this. I mean, it goes along with the vote to support accepting Syrian refugees. It's just part of what we do. So yeah, just you know, an articulate letter to the editor that talks about why we think it's a great idea and what the challenges are and blah, blah, blah. And then if you would think it would be a good thing, one idea I have is to sponsor a house meeting if you think that would be helpful. Um, those are my two ideas. That's a, those are two really good ideas. Yeah, that great. I think that also maybe have somebody from the Human Rights Commission on your steering committee um, or to since you're you're doing this is then to every time we meet you give us a report what has been accomplished so far what still needs to be done because I echo Joel I just need to see something in writing that assures me what is happening and what is needed and what are the institutions that are partnering what are they really going to do beyond saying we're going to make sure that everybody's okay I know you want assurances I yeah. can't give those to you. Um, uh, I um, what was I going to say? I just lost my train of thought. That was in response to Joe. Um, uh, Timeline. Tom, you know. Synopsis. I know that we're all feeling pressure for this first family that comes in January. But this is a long-term process. We don't have to have every T dot. Personally, because I, I tend to function that way, I would love to have every T and I dotted, you know, before the first family arrives. Um, but I, I, I think that as an initiative, we've gone into this saying, 
we, we understand what needs to happen, we understand what might happen, and, and we are gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna figure this out. And we don't say that in a vague way, but there's gonna be so much work. Um, and these are families that will come in, you know, one or two a, a, a month. So, it, you know, we're gonna learn a lot in this first year. And we're going to, um, we're gonna figure this out. And, and, and so we don't have to all be, I, I mean, the, the, the way that people wanna help is overwhelming, but it's, it's gonna be a longer term. Mm -hmm. You know, the 90 day period is actually the easiest period in that that's when Catholic Charities is the most intensively involved. That's really our responsibility with the State Department, that 90 day period of time. We have a whole list of things that we are mandated to do with a refugee family. So it's actually months four through 12. Well, months four through five years, yeah. right. you know, through citizenship and beyond. I mean, that's, that's the work that the, we're asking the community. Yeah. So when I said there's an RMP, an, an RMP, Recession and Placement Agency, that's in essence sort of the federal process. Reception and place. We receive, we place them in a community. The resettlement piece is the piece that's really missing, the long-term resettlement. So the word resettlement agency is really a misnomer um, in a lot of ways. I mean, well, the, I think another, I have another suggestion in the, is when the, as each family arrives, and then we have to do this, is make sure that they know that the Human Rights Commission exists, and that if they have any questions, if they have any issues, that then they can come to the Human Rights Commission. And it doesn't mean that they have to come, it's not to say, oh, somebody's violating my rights, but if, if the circle of care is not able to attend to an issue, whatever that issue is, then maybe we can help with attending to that issue if the if we could do our brochure and yeah I brought the brochure language. today but go ahead. Um, there are also just really concrete things that I think um, the Human Rights Commission could do as a model for the residents of Northampton. Mm -hmm. One of the things I mentioned, I know in an email to, to two of you, is um, constituting a circle of care yourselves around a family. If that feels too intensive, maybe um, volunteering to be a reception team, so going and meeting um, refugees at the airport when they come. Um, there, you know, just some of those concrete things are saying that you will commit to um, providing transportation for the first three months to appointments or so there are just those kinds of you know very basic things that, that and where do people go sign up for that sort of yeah. thing so if you if if you want I'm the contact person I'm sort of liaison so you if you that. talk about how individually or as a group um, Brian I need your contact information we're already plugging you into the communications committee um, let me know. We're creating spreadsheets with categories of people who are saying we want to do this or we want to do this. We're, we're collecting information now. But um, if the but HRC does something like that to then be able to publicize it. So yeah. when you write that letter to the editor, say, yeah. in yeah. fact, the Human Rights Commission has taken sure. on being the primary greeter at the airport or whatever. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. And and you know, we can send out a press release can we about have civilian that? readers. Yes, Brian. So I just have a really quick question before you guys take off. Um, I anecdotally, because of my field of study, know that there are a couple of other RNP um, organizations in the Western Mass area. Do you know of any that are also resettling people from specifically the Middle East? Both Jewish Family Services and Acentria Care Alliance, which are the two in Western Mass, um, do, do that. Okay. Hey, Susanna, thank you very much for thank the you. work. Thank you for your can questions, really your interest. Comment, yeah, but I want to, can I do like the formal thank you for coming first? <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you very much for that we're coming, for the work that Catholic Charities is doing, for helping these people come to Northampton. We're going to do everything we can so that, and stay with them so that they have a good experience and so they can rebuild their lives. Wall. That's really, thank you. Thank you. And Melissa, thank you very much also for all the work that you thank do. You. And how do we get, do we get Brian's email? And I think I have it. You. Okay. Got it? Yeah, I have it too. But I just wanted to say, I think what you're doing is really great. But 
the groundwork you're laying and that I think when you were talking it reminds me of a decision to have kids it's like never a good time to have kids you're never going to be ready for it you just have to take the leap and do it right right and so I I'm with you okay thank you thank, thank you, you everyone thank you all. thank you bye 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 thank you you're welcome Okay. If you leave, we're not going to have a quorum. So why don't we say if we don't have a quorum? Yeah, we need five. Are there six here? How many are we? Yeah. Okay. Can you wait ten minutes? I can't. I've got. He has to get on in. So he's not there better than you. No, I. I've got company that. Okay. Well, thanks, Joel. But what? I love the idea of the letter particularly the letter of support and then if we can put things in there saying if you're interested here's who to do yeah. and I love the idea of being greeting at the airport I'm yeah all, I'm all for that and I really do apologize okay. for leaving so early okay, okay. thank you thanks for Bye. oh my goodness <laughs> thank you <laughs> so if they do you want to continue talking about this for another 15 minutes before we adjourn yeah I love this topic. Do you want to say something, or Susan, or? Uh, I'm more than willing to uh, volunteer, and I uh, think, you know, initially I think, oh, I should just be a citizen and join it somewhere else. But remember, the only way the Human Rights Committee has power commission. commission is when we do things together. Mm -hmm. So I would like this us to do this together. And to your point, Lori, how does a group work together if we don't have experiences together? Mm -hmm. So I agree. let's make this real. And yeah. let's let the Human Rights Committee do something outside of this chamber together. I mean, it's really education. I, wish I didn't want to say that word. So <laughs> I completely agree. I Me too. And I, I, I would like to be part of at least some of this because simply this, I do have case working skills. I've worked in shelters and I've worked in, I've lived with people from other places. I actually went to cultural competency things if I really needed to, given my background. But the thing is, I think it's a wonderful idea considering the fact that we do have segments of this community that are very intolerant. At least I can be maybe a buffer or something. You are, it would be awesome for you to be part of this because you, who rely on public transportation, you know it in and out. Well, not all of it, but right. you know, at least the, you know, I talk to people if I can ask you, questions. You know that any individual can get involved in this project, right? Like you're welcome to go to a meeting, go to a house party. Well, I was planning to go to the 20, the one was on the 22nd. That's great. So then you'll get a way to plug yourself in there. Yeah. Hey, um, Brian or Carla? I mean, it's, yeah. That I think that getting involved with the schools is like top on the list. Mm -hmm. um, I know this, at least Jackson Street, they do monthly assemblies. And they have a theme where they, they pick a class and then that class gets ready and presents on it. Um, maybe doing something on the different countries might help. Like you mentioned, it's not, oh, they're poor, seeing it as negative, it's these interesting people are coming from this country, let's learn about it. And, and poor people don't well. necessarily have to be like ignorant in a lot of other things. And a lot of people have a lot of gifts to give right. that are exactly. different. So the culture, the food, just getting kids involved. Right. Because again, my daughter's Hispanic and she gets a lot of it. Yeah, and thank God she's innocent and doesn't realize it. But when she comes home and tells me the stories, it's like, oh my God. Yeah, and like again, you live in Northampton. <laughs> right. It's not the same. But I was this right. tall by the time I was fifteen. I was a very different kid, and kids are very cruel oh, yeah. and very Definitely. horrendous. And you cannot control the kids' mouths mm -hmm. because what comes out of the parents' mouths is translates to the kids, and then blah blah. You know. Yeah. Excuse me, Chair. May I bring up some new business? Okay, did, does That's everybody? Quick. Yes, okay. Very quick. You speak with such authority, of course. But. We're, we're not done with this business yet, though. Yeah, I thought we were. Um, I don't feel like we're done. This is going to be so quick, and then I, I okay. promise it will be quick. Okay. I would like to be more educated in what the Declaration of International Human Rights are, because I'm much more familiar with human rights uh, as an individual. Is there an international human rights attorney in Northampton who might be willing to uh, give us some uh, no. education? No, but you can find it online, and I'm looking for it right here in my, oh, I didn't bring the right folder. 
You can go. I, I have like, the thing. I have the okay. international declaration, but I'm just wondering if there's anybody who's litigated this or or helped somebody who, in fact, has had their human rights violated. So this isn't a quick question. There has to like, be. I'm thinking of videos on YouTube and that sort of question. thing. <laughs> or like, there, there has to be videos online on YouTube or something that sort of go through issues and give examples. I'll just research it. Thank you. Yeah. Back Sorry. to the other topic. Well, it's just that I don't. I feel like I want us to leave with some sense of where we're going next with this. Emma, don't you think? Okay. Yes, for the next time that we meet, that I think what I would like to see, because we have our experiences, and this is what we're trying to say, you know, to the rest of the group, it's just like if Northampton, Northampton has a way to go, to learn, to be welcoming, we have a great mayor, we have a great city council, we got like great people everywhere, okay. But the experiences of individuals, that's different. So what can we do to ensure that these new immigrants to the city um, know their rights. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I think initially we can be a model for the rest of the community I, in welcoming them. I think it's a matter of education. Mm -hmm. And how mm -hmm. come your daughter is at school in 2016 mm -hmm. in Northampton and somebody has a question about what it means to be Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. that we don't know what it means to be Puerto Rican. What's money like in Puerto Rico, right? I mean, people don't know that it's just, it's the it's about education. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that there's this element that you're bringing that's really, really important. Because this whole discussion tonight was about the group of Syrians, the group of people from this country. And you're saying an individual kid in an individual school is gonna encounter difficulties. Right, and so how is the school, how is that teacher, how is that principal, how is this city going to deal with these specific issues. I want. I mean, that's why I want to see them paper because I just say, yeah, we're going to take care of it, and yeah, they're welcome, and of course we love everybody. And it's like they say. Well, I don't think that's what she was saying. Well, I don't see anything. I don't think that's what she's saying either. But I didn't see that address at all. So if if you could wave a magic wand, and in the city of Northampton, if you could address injustice toward just the Puerto Rican community, mm -hmm. what would you do? What would you? What would you? What would magically happen in Northampton? Education, like you said education understanding and what I mean, people Puerto Rican are proud of as an example an issue that I um, that my daughter faced last semester in school with the upcoming election and the comments that have been made against um, immigrants one of the kids in her class this is a third grade, grade class told her to get ready because once Donald Trump wins she's gonna go to first class to get back to Puerto Rico and like what? that's the sort of thing yes an eight-year-old girl. <laughs> and the thing is, Puerto Rican well, citizens. Yeah, like, and that's citizens. the sort of issue that kids deal with and people deal with. And again, we're Puerto Rican. We're American citizens. Oh. What are these people going to deal with? You know? Right. So if we have, so if sexism and racism and homophobia and Islamophobia, these are all institutionalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, I want to know what? How is the steering committee going to institutionalize multiculturalism? How is that going to be part of the institution? What? I find it so frustrating because I feel a sense of urgency. And no, yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel a sense of urgency. Like it, before all of that, these people need homes, and I and that's what I got from this, and that's an issue. My, you know, my pressing is not wait until we get it together before they come. Mine is it's getting what are you working on dealing. right now? Yeah. How are you working on right now to institutionalize? this multiculturalism so that these assemblies, for instance, where your daughter goes to school, it's just, it's like drilled into the students' uh, consciousness that diversity, that people come from different parts of the world. And whatever your parents or your people at home are saying regarding the election, mm -hmm. that still you have to feel safe where you go to school. Right. And that menace the way your daughter felt. So what are you frustrated about in terms of this urgency? I just feel a need to do something concrete, like now. And so I was hoping we would come out of this meeting with like something that we feel. Would you like to be empowered to write the draft of a letter to the editor and send it to the group, and we will add our signatures and contributions? 
Yes, I would like that. Okay. But I also would like us to. You are empowered. Can that but happen outside of a meeting, though, as approved? Well, well that's fine. why I just said it out, out loud. And so if we're, we're discussing it as a group, and if you email it to all of us, or can it only be done in this room? Well, we have a quorum right now. We no, have, I think she's saying, we can could I email it in between meetings to everybody? Yes, you can. And then all, our only response is, yes, out of my name. Okay. We can't discuss but, it. And then we okay. just... But we can talk about it at the next meeting. We can talk about it the next okay. meeting. If you have urgency, though, you better write it really well. And then I'll just say, add my name. Yeah, add my name. And if you get five add my name, just out of quorum? Okay. So, but then the second thing I want to do is have... Oh, I, but I also, in the letter, I would like to say, this is what the Human Rights Commission is doing, and I think we should sponsor a house meeting. Absolutely. I agree. And if everybody agrees with that, then I can just tell I didn't them. quite get what a house meeting is. A house meeting is to educate the community. So they're having all these house meetings. They've had 17 of them. And they, she said that some are 20, some are 40, and it's people coming to learn about it and to sign up to volunteer to ask questions. So it's education. I volunteer so, my house for this house party for the Human Rights Commission. And so awesome. That's great. So if, if everybody agrees, I will tell Susanna and Elisa that we want to host a house party. And then down the road, when it get, we can keep thinking about, like I think if we want to do a reception team, Joel seemed really into that, we can do that too. Or we could be a circle of camp. Okay. I'm so, open to all those. But first thing I think is to have a house party because that's the need now. They said they want to have a few more. And when, and when they said, okay, you know, finding affordable housing, like, you know, for instance, I have an apartment. Yeah, but but I don't know. I can't imagine that refugees, the American citizens, don't, you know. And I have money. If they, and I rent that below market rate. So, what does this mean? I just sort of say, well, I have an apartment yes. that may be coming up in June. So, and this is what it would cost. It's a two bedroom. Yes, absolutely. And that's what you do. That's what it also, is. Also, another thing yes. is, since we're dealing with other cultures with who had different situations, that. You know, because I, when I used to work with mentally ill people, just people forget how to do stuff. So I had to like teach them how to like use certain kinds of this and that. You know, and so maybe we could have like you know, in terms of, you know, well, that's the circle of care people. Oh, okay. You can volunteer to be on the circle of care. So I want to volunteer to be on the circle of care. Do you want to be in a circle of care, or you're doing the media, social media? But Brian. But we, what we could be a circle of care. I mean, I, that how, can, mean, how can the human rights be a circle of care? What would that look a like? Circle of, I'm not saying I want us to do that. I'm just saying that's, a, that's one of the things that I know, but how, what would that look like? Let's, we, we, let's begin with our first two missions, right. which is a letter to the editor, and Spon we're going to sponsor a house yeah. party. Carla, Before we go in over our head. No, I completely agree with you. That's my I thought, too. I just wanted to say to you, the circle of care, the circles of care will come a little later, and if we wanted to, we could do it. Okay. It might be logistically I, difficult. I just have a, an idea about, my daughter's part of um, a Girls on the Run. It's like a little girl um, track. Yeah, they run, it's really it's cool. They do a lot of community girls. outreach and stuff, and it's all around girls. And part of the um, curriculum is um, picking a charity and helping some way, like doing bake sales, wow. or um, maybe we can do clothes clothing drives or whatever, and Excellent. just have the girls be involved. Um, so maybe I'll email those coaches. I think our, our letter to the editor should say there are a thousand ways for people in the Northampton community to yeah. volunteer. Whatever group you're already involved in, if your family is involved in your church, your church yeah. can do it. Right. If your children are involved in the Girl I'll, Scouts, I'll do that. we'll weave that into the... Yeah, Excellent. and I will ask... Like oh. what you were saying with your daughters. Yeah. I'm gonna ask the girl scouts might follow. get badged for like whatever it is that they're getting, whatever it is they're working towards, so they could get badges. Okay, right. So I recognize that there is a sense of urgency in terms of doing something, but um, one thing that I would like to propose is that we don't actually send a letter to the editor until we meet again and can put details on it. And the reason why I say that is because it's it's all well and good for us to say that the Human Rights Commission is going to sponsor one of these house parties, but when you put that in the paper with zero details, it has, it has very little gravitas. It means nothing to most people. Um, whereas if we were to wait one month, roughly, to 
put official pen to paper and send it, we can add details into the letter. And the letter can be largely written, almost entirely written, just devoid of details until we can actually decide on those officially. But what if I, what if I email them and say we'd like to sponsor a house party and they say can you sponsor one on a date before we meet next? Like, we could actually make this happen before our next meeting possibly. Is that a thing that could be decided in between meetings? Yeah, well, if we're deciding, I think if we're deciding now, because all really all it is is we offer a space, and then they bring the people. We're not gonna we're not gonna speak. They're gonna speak. Who's so. gonna? No, I think that we would all invite the people who we know. I think that too comes to a house meeting. I don't think the ch Catholic Charities invites no, attendees. I, I know we each invite, of us would but, but then we, invite three or four people. Right, but what I'm saying is. If, if I reach out to them and then say, yeah, have one this particular day before our next meeting, then I could write this letter and say this is when we're having it. Also, the letter to the editor doesn't have to include the detail that we're sponsoring a house party. That doesn't have to be part of the letter to the editor. I know, but if we have, if, we, if they give us a date, that could be something that is in the letter, is what I'm saying. I, so, I suspect that the scope of those house parties is longer than the next four weeks, if only because they explicitly requested of the State Department that no family gets handed to them on October 1st. Um, they requested, that doesn't mean what is going to be. I know, but they, they're, have, they're doing this concentrated thing where mm -hmm. they're having house parties all over the city and they're wrapping them up fairly soon. Gotcha. So, okay. um, so that's the only thing I would say. I agree with you better to bring a letter to the group, but I'm just saying if they say, yeah, we, you could have a house party the third, the first week in October, mm -hmm. and we decide you, you have space and you can do it, then we can put it in the letter. Somebody want to make a motion regarding the letter? Somebody want to make a motion regarding the letter for Lori to write a letter? I make a motion that Lori Loisel be empowered to write a letter to the editor on behalf of the Human Rights Committee voicing our support for the Catholic Charities Initiative to bring refugees to Northampton. And also okay. reach out to the Catholic Charities to have a house party. Yes. That's, that's and Catholic Carla's Catholic. fine with her daughter's group. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> and Car wow. you want to you wanna add your, your daughter's group, Girl yeah. on the Run? Yes. This could I be in Lori's letter. Because that's just an example what the Christine was saying earlier of just if you are already part of an organization, yeah. See how your organization can help. This yep. is how we want people to help. So the question: When's the next meeting, please? That's fourth Wednesday of the month. Okay, thank so you. That's, so that's that's kind of. Does why anybody I second that motion? It's the twenty sixth of October. Twenty sixth. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will be definitely having house meeting before then. I would think it could be snowing by then. So yes. Uh, Right, so I, that's, that's my point. Okay, thanks everybody. Well, we have to adjourn. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not leaving. I'm just saying everybody for letting me have something to do. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
But just so you know, Brian, yes, Lori has been a journalist for like 40 years. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> wow. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> um, at least I said something to me on her way out, which is that she wanted us to, I, I, mean, I was hard for me to hear her, but I think she said that she thinks it would be important at our next meeting to put something about Black Lives Matter on our agenda. I did put it on the agenda. Oh, oh okay. And I printed it out. Yeah, I, okay. I, I do. I did have it. Okay, so I think it's just that we, we didn't have to. So call I think the she was saying, I think she then she must have been saying, it. could you move that over to the next meeting too? It's, oh God, it's a committee. It, it, it is a committee. How <laughs> narrow is the commission to hear that? Okay. She printed the back the Black Lives Movement thing. Yeah, so then she did like the homework. The, yeah, I did my homework. Okay. This, this was the thing you were all supposed to look at. In our did everybody look at chair. it? I'm not even gonna look at anybody's eyes because I don't wanna. You don't want to be disappointed in I don't want to be disappointed. <laughs> so just, never mind, I, re I re withdraw the question. Okay. I'll Is there a second then to Lori's letter? Any discussion? Yeah. yeah. Okay, any discussion about it regarding it? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We all voted for Lori to write the letter. Okay. Last piece of business before we leave. Somebody from Hadley wants to start a Human Rights Commission. And they want to speak with somebody on the Human Rights Commission about how we're, how we're doing it here? They have my permission to speak to the chair. You know what? Go back to commission again. <laughs> <laughs> Lori, do you wanna, you know, because I'm going away for, I'm going away. Oh, maybe Joel would do it because he's been on the commission the longest. Yeah. Could the person come to the next meeting? That's a great idea, Carla. I'll ask her to come to the next <laughs> meeting. Okay? I just don't have time. I'm going to be writing a letter. <laughs> I'm finding a party. <laughs> okay. So next meeting is then the 26th of October here at 5.30. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion that we adjourn. I second. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. <laughs> Thank you.